All right, so I thought I'd make a video real quick on the difference between drum brakes and disc brakes and why disc brakes always work better than drum. And a lot of people, I, I noticed on the internet, there's a lot of misinformation on this. And there's a lot of stuff that they just talk about just the heat alone. And there's a lot more than just the heat. Um, it's about a couple of different things. Um, and you might say to yourself, well, you know, drum brakes have all this friction material all the way around here and all the way around here and it's got all that area for it to stop and yet a disc brake system which I just converted the van over to disc brake um, only has these little pads here so you say oh well you know that's like a you know a quarter of the friction area and it, and I'm gonna go over why it still works so much better uh, with less friction area and here's the reason there's two different reasons one is this the this the area that the friction material stops to the drum on the other one is called leverage hydraulic leverage so we're going to talk about two different things the first part's going to be uh, the friction area so on a drum you have a round surface and you have a round surface and with heat changing all the time, when your drum gets hotter, it gets bigger. When it gets cooler, it gets smaller. So that is constantly changing all the time. So what happens is your shoes are always trying to manage, trying to line up, because this is a consistent um, arch because it, it has this friction material on it to keep it from getting hot. Okay, and this is, it doesn't have friction material on it, so it constantly is expanding and retracting, expanding and retracting. So what happens is, is your friction uh, area is constantly changing. So as your drum gets hotter, as your drum gets hotter, it gets bigger. And I'm going to talk about big trucks at the end of this, so why that they're still using drum brakes. Because some people will say, well, the big trucks use them, that's because they're better. And that's not true. We're going to talk about that at the end. Um, so stick around, but if you, um, if, if you notice what happens when the drum gets bigger, what happens is this arch stays the same. So what happens is less and less of the brake shoe is actually touching the drum. So as the drum gets hotter and hotter and hotter, it actually, your brakes fade much quicker because what happens is when that drum's hotter, it's bigger, it's less of an arch. Okay. And this arch is still consistent. So less of your brake shoe is actually touching the drum. So it does not stop as good. And, you know, and when they're hot, it doesn't stop as good as well. There's, you know, you lose that friction area. So, and, and so that's the first thing to talk about. The th so that's the first issue with drum brakes is because it's round, you constantly have a different uh, angle of what is touching the drum. And it's, and it's very inconsistent. Uh, with disc brakes, it's it's always the same because it's a flat area and a flat area. Very simple. There's the but here is the real big reason why they work better, and it, it it all has to do with the heat and this particular issue with hydraulic leverage. When you're talking about wheel cylinders, because they have to travel so much further to reach between the drum, because it is a round surface and a round surface. Um, they have to go out further and further, a lot further distance. They have to usually have a very similar size wheel cylinder as they do the master cylinder. So, for instance, the master cylinder on this, I think, is like 19 millimeter. Uh, and the wheel cylinders, I might, might be 21 in the front and maybe 19 in the back. Um, and the reason that they put 21 in the front, maybe, I'm not sure. I can't remember the exact numbers. But um, the reason that they put the larger ones in the front is because they have more hydraulic leverage. Now you're gonna to get to the reason why disc brakes are so much better. You have this hydraulic leverage. So instead of it being 19 to 19, which is a one to one ratio when it comes to like hydraulics, um, you have 19 to say 21 in the front. And what it does is that gives you more stopping power with the drum brakes. Now this is really where the disc brake can shine. And this is why that smaller stopping area, the smaller pad 
actually does more than the big uh, uh, brake shoe does, okay? See this cylinder, this area right here? This is where the, uh, the, the uh, hydraulic piston is. It's inside here. And on this thing, that is probably 30 to maybe 36 millimeter versus, and the master cylinder is like 19 millimeter. So you might say to yourself, well, how do they do that? I'm going to talk about this in a second with something called the square seal is how that they do, how that they're able to do that with a disc brake system. So on a disc brake system, the brake pads are really, 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 really close to the rotor. They're not touching the rotor. Some people I've seen said, oh, well, they're always rubbing against the rotor. That's not how it works. I'll explain to you why that they don't touch the rotor in a second. But um, they're really, really, really close to the rotor. They're able to do that because it's a consistent flat surface. Okay, because you have flat surface and another flat surface versus a round surface and a round surface. It's harder to have the circumferences match up. So they have to travel further back and forth. On the, on the disc, they're very, very, very close. So what you end up with, with is hydraulic leverage. So being that you say on this car, I think these are a 19 millimeter master cylinder, maybe it's a 21, I'm not sure, 19 millimeter. And this being 36 millimeter, when you push on the, if they were trying to do that in a, with a drum brake system, you would have to, your brake pedal would have to go way too far up and down for it to be able to do it. And usually what happened is your brake pedal would hit the floor before your actual, your, your drums would actually touch. So, but on a disc brake system, because they're so close, the pads are so close to the rotor, it doesn't have to travel very far at all. And you get all that hydraulic leverage. So it's like having a really big pry bar, okay, on your brakes. And the reason that they're able to do that, okay, with disc brakes is because disc brakes dissipate the heat better. So, and you know, with the disc, disc brake didn't vented rotors as you can put, and the rotor being exposed like this, and air is getting to it, um, they dissipate heat a lot better than the drum. But it, again, it's it, and it doesn't change it, when it when it does not change the actual friction surface because, like on the drum, it's constantly changing that friction surface, so they do not work as good as disc brakes. All right, so that pretty much covers that part of it. Let me talk to you about how did those disc brakes stay so close to the rotor, okay, and not touch. Because a lot of people, I've noticed people go, oh, well, they're rubbing against their, you know, when the disc brake goes out, it, you know, the little piston goes out, it stays out. No, it doesn't. This is why. So you have your disc brake piston, okay? And then you have this square, it's an O-ring that goes around, in the inserts inside your caliper. So your piston goes out of the caliper and there's a square O-ring. When, when the uh, piston goes out of the caliper, the square O-ring twists like this. And what that does is, is it keeps it sealed, but it makes the, the piston slide out, okay? And then as soon as you let off the brake, because you have hydraulic pressure behind here and that's pushing the piston out, so as soon as you let off the brake, the hydraulic pressure is gone. And what happens is that square seal, that rubber square seal, naturally wants to correct itself back to being square again because it's turned sideways like this. If you can imagine, it's like a spring. That square seal will turn and then automatically push the caliper piston just back, just barely far enough to not be touching the rotor. So that's how that works. That keeps your... your brake pad really, really, really close to the rotor and not touching it. So it's a better way to manage the friction, okay? It's just basically friction management. And and you can get a, you can put a lot more pressure on a disc brake uh, piston because it, it, it has, uh, because the rotor dissipates the heat better. Now, some of you guys might say the big truck thing. Why do disc brake? Why do trucks run still run drum, drum brakes? In fact, most of the cabs in the front they don't have them. They have disc brakes up front, guys. Um, as far as I know, and I've seen trailers and trailers and trailers full of disc brake axles. So I know that they are doing some sort of conversions. I don't normally work on trucks. 
um, but I know a little bit about how that they work. So I'm going to explain it to you so you understand why that they still have drum brakes on trucks. And really it's because of a, the air brakes and the disconnecting of, and connecting of trailers all the time. So with the with a drum brake and, and air brakes, you're able to go up to the trailer, you know, go up to a trailer, connect to it, drive away, disconnect, go hook up a different trailer, drive that trailer away, and it's easier to manage from that 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 way. But on a air brake system, you kind of have to understand how they work. Is you know, you've got a, a drum that's two feet tall, so around to say two, two feet tall or even bigger. Um, and you know, when you have that big of a drum, okay, in order to get the friction material to touch against the drum, you can't use hydraulics because it's too much distance, it would be too much fluid movement, and you would not be able to get that same amount of, uh, of distance, you know, from hydraulics. With air brakes, because uh, air is, is much you know easier to manage from that respect, they're able to get the air brakes to go out a lot further. So the pads on a or the the the, the disc brake or the not the disc brake but the uh, <clears throat> drum drum uh, drum shoes are uh, uh, virtually uh, maybe about a half an inch distance because of this, because how large the brake system is. Is like say a half an inch distance between there and the drum, so the air brake system works better for uh, for those large vehicles because it's such a large area, and to make air brakes work with disc, it would be literally impossible. They have to be a hydraulic system because that remember how I told you about how that piston slides back if they used air, it would be a pressurized air system and. Uh, this air brakes are working on a depressurized, so that when you lose your air pressure, the brakes are on all the way. So it's it, it, it's a completely different type of a system. So in order for them to change to disc brakes, they're going to have to have a conversion type of thing that takes the air to hydraulics and then uh, change the axles out and and make it that way. So in order to do that, they have to change the whole way of of doing it, and it would probably be very costly. And, uh, you know, it, it just it basically is more of a user thing. Now, disc brakes do work better than drum by, by far. There's, there's really no way to even compare them. But um, uh, that's probably the reason why the big trucks don't do it. Now, when some of you guys go, well, I have disc brakes in the front and I've got drum brakes in the rear. Why do they do that? Well, up until recently... Uh, most of the stopping power in your car was done from the front because when you stop your weight moves from the rear of the car to the front of the car so if you notice some of the cars when they stop they go like this so uh, most of your stopping power is done in the front now uh, the, the one of the reasons is is because the complication of the parking brake so uh, it, but but a lot of cars have overcome that now, and they're putting four wheel disc brakes on more cars now than they used to. But the reason that they weren't doing that is because it's much easier to have a parking brake system by lever in a drum than it is to actually put one in a caliper because you have to have a mechanical thing inside your caliper to be able to push that that um, push the uh, the pads out to make it stop with the with the pads from a uh, from from a cable so it's 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 a lot different than than it is on on drum you know so and, and some of the cars actually have another little drum brake inside of the uh, uh inside of the rotor for just for the for the uh parking brake so it's kind of expensive to do uh so that's one of the reasons they don't do it now i'm going to tell you real quick again uh, uh, that you guys are really interested in this um, the new cars. Now, my new car, you know, newer, 2009. That's newer to me. Um, these are really old. That's old. These are new. <laughs> no, but uh, 2009 is newer. Okay. What they figured out is that if you can, if you can use a proportioning valve management system to actually make the rear brakes. So this is, let's say, this is the rear and this is the front brakes. They can make the rear brakes stop 
first, okay, they used to make it just the most of the stopping power was done in the front. If they could make the rear brake stop first, your car would want to go straight. So just like if you throw an arrow, you know, uh, throw a, throwing the dart, you know, the, the little uh, fins are in the back of the dart. If they were in the front, you know, it wants to flip over. The same thing happens when your car. So if you if you were able to stop your rear brake, your rear wheels first, so they make an, the new proportioning valves are like this. The rear brake stops first, and then it brings. So under light braking situation, the rear brake will stop. And then then it brings braking power to the front of the car, and then back to the rear again. So it starts in the rear, then goes to the front, and then goes back to the rear again. There's new proportioning valves inside your brake system in the newer cars, um, and especially in the Volkswagen Jetta, that actually manage that. And, and that even makes your braking system even work better. So in my car, immediately when I slam on the brakes, it goes straight and it stops so fast that you know it's so much better than even these old cars did and the cars with the drum brakes did because they're actually doing things like proportioning to the rear, then going to the front, then go back to the rear again, you know, so that your car goes straight. And I've noticed uh, on the older cars, uh, on the older cars that had front disc and rear drum, that the front disc brakes would wear out two or three times before the rear, rear would wear out. Now, um, I'm noticing on my car that the actual rear wears out first and then the front. It's because the proportioning system is using, you know, under, light break, under light braking situations, I'm using the rear a lot more than I am the front. And that's, it's actually a better way to stop. So that, all that stuff's been happening over the last 20 years of my life. So I thought I'd just share that with you guys, uh, if, if those are interested. Uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully I got it explained so that you can understand it. And uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Talk to you in the next video.